Support for Living and Learning with Disabilities comes from Living Innovations, providing support for people with developmental disabilities to have a good life at home and in the community. Services include community connections, which facilitates employment, skill development, and community integration to maximize each individual's well-being and independence. For more information or to learn about job opportunities for compassionate people wishing to do meaningful work, visit livinginnovations.com. And by the Natural Care Wellness Center, which has been serving the New Hampshire and Maine Seacoast for 22 years. Our goal is to encourage a healthy lifestyle through education, wellness choices, and hands-on healing. Natural Care Wellness Center offers gentle force chiropractic, family and child wellness, chiropractic acupuncture, holistic nutrition, nutrition response testing, a decompression table, therapeutic exercise, whole food supplements, neuroemotional techniques, and massage therapy. Sometimes we miss all those wonderful qualities that we just listed in that last song because we decide who people are before we even get to know them based on maybe what they look like, how they talk, what kind of clothes they're wearing, what kind of music they like, whatever. We decide who they are before we ever get to know who they really are inside. And it happens to us too. Sometimes people decide who we are before they know us. I think all we really want is just for, for people to see us for who we really are. See me beautiful, look for the best in me It's what I really am and all I want to be It may take some time, it may be hard to find But see me beautiful See me beautiful each and every day Could you take a chance? Could you find a way to see me shining through in everything I do and see me beautiful? See me beautiful, look for the best in me It's what I really am and all I want to be It may take some time, it may be hard to find But see me beautiful See me beautiful each and every day Could you take a chance? you find a way to see me shining through in everything I do and see me beautiful. Thank you. Alison Decker. We get tired of that show. Never. How is everybody? Good to see you all. Good to see you too. Good morning. I, you know, when I was hearing that intro and everything, I was thinking, you know, this is almost like 
I, we've had some challenging environments to do a show, <laughs> but uh, but uh, but this is almost like doing a show in the Titanic, you know, <laughs> you know, with there's some icebergs out there and they may get you at any moment, you know. So it's like that feeling of you know, what's next? What what's the how's the other shoe going to drop? And, uh, it's true. All the That's catastrophes so that are going on in the world. And we're grabbing a lifeboat and we're going to carry on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Huh? I like the fact that we're still doing this. And, uh, I do too. Yeah. Uh, my guest today is my old friend of mine, Larry Hosack. You can see him out there. He's he's pretty competent technically. Well, any and uh, compared to me, he's he's Albert <laughs> Einstein. But that's uh, so he's created his own backdrop there. You're actually sitting in your house, aren't you, Larry? Yeah, I'm in the bedroom. We uh, speak of environmental challenges. I've moved around three different rooms in our house, which is all we have, <laughs> to try to get the best. Find the right one. And my <laughs> wife is in the kitchen with her her tablet and um, cell phone, taking a class from the um, community <laughs> college. <laughs> So we're both on the Zoom this morning. Oh, boy. Um, I hear you. Yeah. Well, um, we're going to get into it here. Uh, I'm going to give you a little uh, background, Larry, and you correct me. And Larry has so many issues here. <laughs> He's like a one-man hospital ward. I don't know where to start, Larry. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> yeah, nice. That was a nice introduction. One of, one of his issues that I'm his friend, and we go walking together all the time. So that's a major uh, complication in his life, a challenge there. You know. Well, so, it's a good thing you you allow our guests to be able to laugh. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You wouldn't believe how much money I handed to Ronnie to be nice today. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. So. Uh, Seriously, Larry's got Larry's a diabetic. He's also had a COVID experience. Um, had uh, one of those. If you look, you know, Google is wonderful, and that you can look up things and verify them, or at least get some partial verification. One of the side effects is Bell's palsy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, so Larry had that, and re mm. I remember walking with him, and uh, uh, it's it's um, it's on it's. And I'm amazed at how well you took it because you're telling me about this and your face is drooping and everything. And but that you went away and um, that that those symptoms went away. Are you free of those totally, Larry, or do you still feel anything from those? Um, you know, it's funny you get sensitive to your own. Once in a while, especially now that we're in the in the computer and looking at ourselves on the screen, I feel like maybe my eyes are different, but it, it's minor minuscule. I, I don't have any other um, links to... In fact, when I had the Bell's palsy, it was the end of a two-week quarantine, quarantine because mm -hmm. I... But I never got sick. And then the day before I was supposed to go back to work, I, I looked in the mirror in the morning, I thought, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm in trouble. You know, and and then, and then they said, uh, even though it isn't proven at this point, um, they felt the Bell's palsy was an indication of perhaps mm -hmm. being contagious. Right. So I was out of work for a while. Um, now I think, as Ronnie says, it's considered a, a side effect. But back, back in March, it was all, who knew what was going on, you know? Uh, yeah, so this is really early on that you, had, you went through all of this. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think this is the most timely. We're going to get into some of your history if we have time. But um, you also work in an assisted living facility and talk about that. And uh, how did you get into that work? And then what happened when you were diagnosed? How did they handle it there when you were diagnosed with COVID? Wow. You opened the door to a long history <laughs> I really wanted to be a doctor years ago, and uh, med school was just way more than I had anticipated, way more. And I basically fell apart, and it took a couple of years to get back into adult life. I was a young, young man. And so I ended up working in music for four years in a wonderful retail store. 
Oh. In Connecticut. And then I liked hospitals. Uh, for some reason, I enjoy the atmosphere, challenging and stimulating. So I found a job as an activity director in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. And I've done that almost my whole life. And so uh, here in Maine, when we moved here uh, a good while ago, I applied for various activity director jobs. And, uh, and then the, the field is... Uh, changed a lot and I kind of didn't fit into a lot of the, the uh, degree programs but I saw this ad for resident assistant at the Edgewood Inn uh, assisted living and I, it was on that Indeed program which is amazing it's like 11 o'clock at night I saw this ad I said that's me right there so next what does that mean Indeed program Larry? What does that office, mean? Office and I got the job um, as an assistant we cook we clean we help residents with their showers, with their mail, and activities. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm in an atmosphere with 10 older people and um, uh, two staff members at a time, mm -hmm. and administrator and uh, maintenance and things like that. And there's 10 separate rooms for the residents. And we, um, we provide pretty much everything from meals in a dining room area to um, getting to doctor's appointments, daily medications, we help with those. And um, so when one of us comes down with a positive uh, reading for COVID back in March, myself and a, a coworker, we didn't know why um, we ended up positive because we never got sick. We never had any symptoms, but we were out of work for two weeks and they paid. Most place, places are paying for COVID and um, and then I got the Bell's palsy, and I was out again another week or two. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you know, it wasn't really a, a huge item for discussion, especially among the residents. They they didn't really know too much about it. We told people um, the basics of what was going on, but we didn't want to scare people. So they would say, you know, a lady who's a hundred years old, and we go into the room with a mask on. And they'll say, what, why are you wearing that mask? What's the reason? They, well, because of COVID, because of a virus. Oh, well, yeah. and, you know, it, it takes some reminding as to what the heck is going on, you know. And now, because it's a, a severe surge, the, even the residents wear masks in common areas, mm -hmm. um, entering the dining room, um, coming uh, for a shower or different things that they need help with. Everyone's wearing masks. No one comes into the building except the staff. Families visit um, in the good weather outside. And now we have a special visit, somewhat separate for visiting, for families to come in. Oh, good. It, it's very um, oh. difficult for residents who have yeah. you know, been more or less isolated to some degree, especially for a while there. There was no visitors, no yeah. family, no, nobody coming in. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I get, uh, it's a very deep for me. I, I enjoy the work, and my coworkers are just terrific people. And um, so that's a little bit. I, I don't want to hog this. Any, you guys had questions? I yeah. do. I do. Go oh, ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> Larry, Good just man. out of curiosity, um, when this, the shutdown and visitors weren't allowed family, I know it was heartbreaking and is still for a lot of people. Did you see any great effect on um, patients with Alzheimer's possibly just not having that connection? Was there regression? I mean, could you tell me a little bit about what you did to help with that? Yeah, that's a great question. We are very, very aware of that all the time um, in trying to find ways to connect residents with um, their families when mm -hmm. they do a face-to-face in-person -face, uh, visit. One of the things we've done with the technology is help people get um, a phone or an iPad or Alexa mm -hmm. so they can see their families during telephone calls. Mm -hmm. you know, they can actually see each other. Mm -hmm. And um, also, um, uh, obviously, just regular telephone calls. We help with a lot of the communication. Um, and just the um, opportunity for residents to talk about what it's like, how they miss their family, and yeah. Going on, um, 
for instance, we have one uh, woman that's just a, a terrific uh, lady. A lot of, they all are, really. This particular lady has a granddaughter that's quite a good um, soloist. Oh. And come to find out, she, she has several entries on YouTube. Oh. oh, oh. And so I can bring my laptop into the uh, resident's room and show her her granddaughter singing on, on TV, oh, you know. Wow. And, uh, you know, these kinds of things. Uh, we, um, we'd also make a fuss if a family brought um, cake or um, other personal items. Some families baked a pie. And we would, uh, you know, any kind of contact we could have. And, and yet, you know, in, in reality, there probably have been difficult days for some folks yeah. understanding. And, oh. and one, of the, one of the signs is... A, a lady who used to ask, um, she's moved to a different place now, but she used to ask why we had the masks on. And we'd have to explain it every day, several times a day. <laughs> yeah. Problems with memory, short-term yeah. memory. Sure. And so any any kind of reassurance we could do was mm -hmm. um, important, you know, and helpful. Which is so wonderful, Larry. Good question. Yeah. Yes. You got any questions, Pam? You got any questions, sir? Well, I, I had a very similar question to Wendy because I was wondering how the residents were coping, you know, because it's so hard, you know, when they don't see, you know, one family member that comes in every day, you know, and they have to see them outside and they want them to come inside. Um, but you said they have a special place now for them? Yeah, we have a, a vacant room at the end of a hall with an outdoor entrance next to yeah, it. That's fantastic. And it's set up for minimum exposure to each other it sounds terrible <laughs> you know i just thought of one other thing that we do for mm -hmm. residents and that's um i can't, can't remember see there it goes um <laughs> find the group it's okay yeah yeah you're you're among <laughs> friends here larry you're among it, it was a good one too so uh, i'll come up with it <laughs> oh. yeah you're in the perfect group here <laughs> yeah <laughs> Spit it out when it comes to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. right. You were talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, um, Larry, you want to go? How does see? This is we were talking before, and when we we usually get together, uh, people don't know that out there maybe, but uh, we usually get together and talk about what we're going to go over. And there's so much. I mean, and and there's so much unknowns like. Can can you see like you're diabetic? Do you see as those diabetic insulin needs changed at all uh, since you've had COVID or anything? Do you see any difference there or any other difference? Well, that, I think it's uh, yeah. I, I, it's a difficult question because I don't know that there've been exact you know tit for tat studies of the two being related. <laughs> but um, how about you? I'm asking about you. I, I appreciate yeah. Me, the, the hard part, I think I mentioned before, is my eating habits. Um, when you're really active and out in the community or your job or what, shopping, whatever, you tend to not snack as much or eat as much. Mm -hmm. You're busy and, you know, it's a, it's a part of the day. But when you're sitting, maybe watching TV, maybe for me, or working on the computer or housekeeping in the home here, you tend to snack more. And that's difficult for a diabetic. Um, and I have to, I think I've been testing more. I test my blood sugar uh, four times a day or so mm -hmm. and measure the insulin intake. It's, it's very easy. It's not nearly as difficult as what they would, uh, you know, when they have the TV commercials that say, don't stick yourself, it hurts, it hurts. Well, so the needle's about a sixteenth of an inch long. And it, it's kind of poke and maybe it's me. Uh, maybe it's a macho thing, but uh, it, it, I think diabetes, uh, people shouldn't be quite as afraid. They should be careful and do what their program outlines. But with COVID, like I say, you're around food, you're around, you have your own refrigerator, you have your own cupboard, you know, and stove. And so the tendency is to uh, not to take as much care and when and how and what you eat. Mm -hmm. I, I'd be more concerned about uh, the mental as aspects, you know, how this affects people mentally. 
just the isolation, uh, the forced isolation. You you said this was okay to bring up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I, but being in an institution, do you think, knowing what it was like to be with people in an institution, do you think that this uh, this forced isolation is going to cause more and more people having to go that route and be in an institution? Do you have any thoughts on that, Larry? Mm. I'm not sure which part of the process of being an institution you're referring to. Well, I'm saying the general climate of isolation. Oh, okay. The mental strain puts on the average person has to be exacerbated when you're talking about a population that already has a uh, mental yeah. you Well, know. you know, um, with, the, with the bipolar, uh, I think the... Uh, the interesting thing is um, <laughs> my doctor wanted to change my medication for some reason. It was a good idea, but not, not, not necessary. But I said, doc, I said, I'm not going to need too much of this. I'm getting near the finish line. <laughs> 70. And it's like, how much more improvement can I have? You know, I've been trying for 70 years to get better, you know, but um, so now I can't remember what I was talking about again. This is terrible. <laughs> Your name is Larry Hosack, and you live in Elliot. <laughs> I, think, I think the reason I mentioned that is I like to be at home doing projects. So for me, it's not isolation. It's, um, uh, it's personal involvement in the things I enjoy here at home. Mm -hmm. Between the computers, we have several. I, I fuss with them. I do things. I do pictures. I do email and um, music from my computer is a recording studio. Uh, so I find that my, my time at home when I was uh, quarantined was as busy as when I was out. Just it was here at home, not out at a store. And we did go. I had to get medications um, and uh, other supplies from Walmart. And we noticed back uh, even July half the people at Walmart were wearing masks. Mm -hmm. People were still in kind of a rebellious mm -hmm. stage, you know, I don't need that. Da, 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 da. Well, now there's a huge banner in front of the entrance. Masks are mandatory. Yeah. You go to mm -hmm. Walmart, you not only keep your social distance, which I think is a lot like sixth grade, you know, when you have girls and the boys on opposite sides of the gym. <laughs> Never want to get that one, yeah. But other, <laughs> you know, it's a uh, social distancing. That's what they call it. Um, no, but it's, you, everybody has masks on now. Yeah, Pretty yeah. much everywhere you go, mm. still a little little resistance. But I think that um, you know, these signs on people's front yards. We're all in this together. Mm -hmm. Church, See now. Um, we're saying prayers for you, or. You know, it, the, the, the society has rallied mm -hmm. at this point, and it's a long haul. We still have to go, but I think we're learning things that we couldn't have learned any other way without this, uh, you know, terrible situation. We're all finding new avenues of uh, activity to, to, to help things get better. Yeah. Well, I think it helps that you you have other outlets. You and you and Leona both write songs. Right. Songs. Right. That's oh. my wife, Leona. Oh, and we um, spent quite a bit of time back in June. I bought two bird feeders, and here we are, these old old guys here. Wife, well, she's not so old. It's me. It's <laughs> anyway. We're, we had a ball watching the birds sitting out on a little deck, watching. I mean, that sounds kind of silly, and you know, most senior citizens aren't out watching birds, but everybody finds their way to to cope, oh, and, and oh, so we found some new things like that that were. Yeah really good yeah. do you find people being more creative larry in in how they're going to really approach uh what's happening and and how they're going to get it not be as isolated and do what they can i do um i do find people are we have a, a staff member with a, um, a lady with a three-year-old daughter mm -hmm. and actually you know, she's been there for a while. So they call each other up on the, on the, um, what do you call it? Uh, FaceTime. Face 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 yeah. yeah. And, you know, a little three-year-old can talk to her mom. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
you know, these kind of things are very valuable. Um, yes. We have our daughter who lives further away, um, and we were able to connect and uh -huh. you know, get together as a family. So good. Yeah. I don't know if that I don't think think technology is the total answer. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure right. has helped. We wouldn't be here this morning like this sharing. No. You know, it hadn't been for this terrible no. you know, thing going on. No. Mm -hmm. Larry, you wanna play us a song? You wanna play your oh, song? Yeah. <laughs> this is my old buddy here. It just happened. <laughs> we could uh we could say um we're going to play a recorded song. Uh, what do you want to do here, John? Should, John? should he sing his song now, or are we going to just have him sing another song? Well, I, Wait, let me hear it, John. John. It's, it's going to be um, the song that he recorded is going to be played at the end of the show, so it would be twice, but if you'd well, like to do it. Uh, I, I, well, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him to sing another song, but what we're going to say uh, with for the people we were talking about this before we went on the air larry's written the perfect song unintentionally for this time that i think is needed it has this phrase in there about lifting someone up and so you could be thinking out there uh as uh sings another song uh, that who do you want to lift up in your life mm -hmm. and you can you'll see email there uh, at the end of the show and you can um you can email a photograph of somebody, uh, maybe a first name. I wouldn't use last names and say, this is who I want to lift up in my life. Beautiful. And uh, so that was like the inspiration to have you on the show in the first place. But there's so many topics, Larry. But I want to uh, I want to hear them hear you sing another song. Do you have another song? Yeah, this is one. Um, when I started the show this morning, I, I think I played this for you, Ronnie, a while ago, but it wasn't the right time. It's, it's called uh, Can Do. It's like your intro at the beginning of the show. Oh, okay. it's, called, it's not what you can't do, but what you can that makes you a woman or a man. Mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I'll just sing a little bit of it. Yeah. It's not what you can, but what you can that makes you a woman or a man. It's not what you can't do, but what you can that makes you a woman or a man. Differences are part of life, but they shouldn't be a cause of strife. It's not what you can't do, but what you can that makes you a woman or a man. People of every shape and size have lots of things to do. People of every shape and size have lots of things to do. But when you look into your heart, that's a very good place to start. It's not what you can't do, but what you can that makes you a woman or a man. I love that. That would be a song you would sing in the institution. Would you sing that to them? It, Ronnie, um, uh, you know where you where you work. Uh, we, we call these rehab centers. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know. I mean, I've been socially inappropriate for years now. Larry. You know, you don't mention the word institution before you get your blood pressure checked, you know. <laughs> yeah, John gets mad at me when I call him codger. He doesn't like that either. That's, that's yeah. too. Yeah. Um, I'll do a little Look, bit of this song. The guy that dresses like Santa Claus, you know, he's <laughs> complaining. You know. Um, Pamela and Wendy, thank you very much for doing this. I, It's funny, I... A lot of times these discussions are are um, take place in lunch rooms and uh, on break and different things like that. Rarely do you get a chance to talk in an atmosphere with other professionals and people in the field, you know, to, to compare notes and yeah, right, right. You know, it, it's yeah. really helpful to me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. You know, well, so. thank you. Yeah, well, we're so happy you're on the show. I mean, it it means so much, Larry what you've gone through in your life and how you've, you know, how we learn through all the ups and downs in life. And I love the song I can do because, you know, we can, you know, if we look yeah. at life in that perspective, you know, you know, it's, it's not that the, the glass is half full or the glass is empty. It's That's what right. the heck have you got in there? <laughs> right. <laughs> 
right. Good, Larry, I like that. Is it lemonade or is it, you know, sugar free? Right. This is a little bit of the song at the end. Just it, it, it came to me one during a dream, actually. Oh. And the chorus was repeating over and over. And I, I woke up early, it was this about five years ago, on a Saturday morning, and it just kind of evolved. And I wrote it down, and then the, the verses came. And then I didn't even think about it for a couple of years. It's funny how songs, once they're down on paper, you don't always get them out where people can hear them. And Ronnie has been very supportive in promoting this particular song. Um, I sent a copy to Andy Grammer. I don't know whether he called me back or... Oh, or okay. Red. Was it you sent it to Andy or Red? Ron. Sent it to both. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, it's like a plumber. He wanted to be a plumber, and he said, what happened? Well, it was only a pipe dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's the kind of humor I got to live with when we go for walk. Yeah, when you walk. <laughs> I know. You keep that social distancing at that yeah, point. Yeah, that's right. yeah. But I can yeah. still hear him. You know. Ten feet. <laughs> Either way, I can still hear the guy. You know. Um, I'll just do a little bit of this song because it comes out. John really. John blended it in with video of people learning new skills and mm -hmm. trying to things with disabilities. It's a beautiful job he did. We'll see at the ending, yeah. yeah. Um, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love If you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. Oh, that's beautiful. That came to you in a dream, Larry, huh? Yeah. So it's not yeah. something you consciously said, I want to write a song about this. It just came to you. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, can I, uh, this, I'd like to just mention something that Larry said that I totally and completely believe in. If you are isolated, and you don't find something to do with your mind or your hands, um, it literally can make you sick, I believe. Um, and yes. in terms of lowering your immune system because you get mm -hmm. depressed. That's and, so true. Um, one of the things that my wife and I, uh, we haven't been away from this house since March. Uh, we have all our groceries delivered and, and all that kind of stuff. I guess we've gone to the uh, down to the gas station once or twice from uh, when she's made errands to go pick up the groceries, uh, but they bring them out to the car. Anyway, um, I made it a, this doing the editing that I'm doing for two shows takes up a lot of time. But on the days that I'm not doing that, every day I work on a new piece of software to learn how to use it. You know, so oh. I'm learning so that I can apply it to other things. Or I will put a put a um, headset on and listen to some music, and I'll walk around the cellar, walk around the basement, or something. <laughs> um, it's just you, you got to do something. I have a couple of friends who just watch TV all day long, and that's not the not the way. One of them's diabetic, and he's gained weight. His sugar levels up. You were right on. You hit the nail right on the head, uh, Larry, because he said, I, I eat a lot more when I'm just sitting there watching TV. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that. I totally agree with that. Yeah. Well, you're so right about the depression because our immune system does depress, you know, it, with our depression and the isolation. What I'm seeing with clients right now is the panic and fear. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to dispel that panic and fear and just, you know, help them in that perspective and holding that space because yeah. it, it's not um, anything people can really continue with. That's what I worry about people that are alone 
because of the isolation and loneliness. No. Yeah. Hey, Pamela, what do you, what would you ask the average person? What would you suggest to the average person to say when they see somebody in their immediate circle or friends or feeling this strain? What, what, what yeah. do you suggest we say to them? Well, I, I typically say, how are you coping? You know, and, and what are some ways that you are coping? Like Larry had already said, you know, he likes the project that he's doing uh, and John as well, you know, do something that will also um, increase your mental acuity because if we don't, that's the hardest part because we're going to lose a lot of our cognitive ability. Um, there was a great article in the New York Times in September, September 20th, the Sunday Times, about social atrophy. I might have mentioned it before on the show, uh, where people are going to get to a place where they're not even knowing how to socialize. So it's like losing a muscle, you know. Uh, so, and that's what they were referring to. What's going to happen to our children? What's going to happen to, you know, the whole population if, for instance, you know, in Edgewood, when they have, when they're so isolated from their families and that, that loss is so predominant with them, you know, how are they going to cope with that? And how wonderful that they were able to open up a room that's going to the outside so that they can see, see a family member, um, you know, with, with the restrictions, but at least they can do that um, before it was outside and it wasn't for long. Uh, and so I think it's such an important piece of keeping our mental health acuity here, because if we don't keep it up, what's going to happen to our nation, if you look at it, so to speak, you know, yeah. Wendy, you have any thoughts on this? How are you coping with this, your friend? Oh, I'm just listening to it all and trying to figure that out. Um, <laughs> oh, it's a whole new world. I mean, I am, you know, just going into my second term as a state legislator and that's just been really difficult um because we didn't get to end our last session the way okay. that we, you know a lot of bills weren't heard that should have been heard things have just are, are chaotic as everything else we're all it's a learning curve trying to figure out how do you do this so uh -huh. now we're starting over again uh -huh. And there's a lot of uncertainties about, you know, how do you get people to be able to come and testify on a bill and, and have that support that's so needed to get legislation passed? And right. just a lot of the, the topics that we're talking and discussing now and throughout the other programs are things that are coming up in front of the legislation that need yeah. to be addressed, need yeah. to be heard. How are we going to do this? Is it fair? It's just, so right. that's been um, a lot of Zoom calls we've been doing. And the thing that I find frustrating, even with this, is then all of a sudden, okay, see you later, bye, and we're done. Bam. There's right. no after talk. There's no discussion. That's you right. Get up and, oh, it's quiet now. What am I going to do? So, you know, even where I have been going out here and there but not like usual um it, yeah it's it's very disruptive i haven't seen my son since august oh. and um mm -hmm. you know my mom called last night or yesterday in really shaky teary voice because she just missed me and needed to hear my voice and yes. they're in florida but mm -hmm. they just had a couple of friends come down with covid so it's uh -huh. I don't know. It's difficult. It's difficult. We've been talking about Christmas and we just all decided not to get together, which I mean, we had, but really confirmed it. And so it's, it's everybody. And I feel for it children is. who, um, whose lives are completely disrupted. We all are we're all learning. We're trying to make the best of it. That's I live right. with my 94 year old father-in-law and his caretaker. He's very self-sufficient, but still, there are times he drives me freaking nuts. <laughs> like today, he's up at 8.30. He's going to market basket because he needs to get some milk. You were there three times yesterday. You know, be careful. It's, it's, it's icy, and I have to go out and make sure everything's okay ahead of time. And 
Right. And and he can do things for himself. So I really, really have a lot of um, empathy and compassion for caregivers and caretakers. Oh, absolutely. Yes. That, you know, our patients run thin as is. Yeah. And you try so hard, but boy, Mm -hmm. not having that extra uh, help or, um, you know, outlets. Right. um, Right. You know, I mean, he meals on wheels comes and that's, he loves it. He doesn't even really need it, but it's that social exchange with another person besides me. That's right. That's That's his highlight. That's what he needs. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we all need. Like you said, you know, when you, when you finish with the legislature on Zoom, Mm. there's no discussion. There's nothing there. Um, So what happens to people, you know, when you're looking for, you know, just that confidant, you know, to talk to someone, you know, uh, it's been yeah. really hard in that perspective. Yeah, yeah it Larry, is. Can you relate to this? I mean, are you, are you, uh, are the people you work with uh, at, at Edgewood, are they feeling the strain more and more or are they just getting used to it now? They're okay. How are the workers themselves? Mm. Yeah, good question. I, I don't think he heard. Uh, I don't think he hear, uh, has he got his audio? Can you hear, Larry? Larry? Oh, you're asking me? Yes. <laughs> um, actually, the co- my coworkers are in excellent spirits and are they? Oh. dedication. And the two of us at a time in, in the building, plus uh, the administrator sometimes. Um, yeah. And it's. Um, it's hands-on. We we know the residents like their family members, and uh, we share. We serve meals. We, mm-hmm. you know, different things. It, yeah, it. Um, yeah, we're very fortunate. I, I I go to work looking forward to seeing everybody, the residents mm-hmm. and the other staff members. Yes. So it's it's a given. We're a pretty small place. We're in a separate building, mm-hmm. so it's not as. Um, uh, not as many people in general as right. uh, uh, a nursing home might have 30, 40, 100, uh, whatever. We're 10 residents. and yeah. But boy, I'll tell you, uh, uh, Patty, our owner, she's been there forever and she's just a terrific yeah. she's just person. And she's she has us really locked down tight yeah. with the rules. Mm hmm. You know, if I have my mask, I forget. I don't get it on my nose, Larry. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's all done with um, caring. Yes. And, um, support, not criticism. Right. Wear full PPE to help people with showers. Mm-hmm. John mm-hmm. has a photo. Did you get those photos, John? No, no. I, I did not. I, oh. I, I, I we'll not talk there. after. Okay. I'll check. Um, I, I have you can show photos of people taking a shower, though. Larry. No, no. <laughs> no, it's me You're getting pretty liberal here. But the you're taking a shower. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. Um, it, I, it, I look like a big blueberry with this. Uh, it, it's this color I have on, but it's plastic, and it covers your arms and everything, goggles and. That's you know, what you wear you for work? That's what you would wear for your work, Larry? No, helping people with showers or with any kind of close personal care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I, just, I uh, admire someone who could do that. I don't think I could do that, but I just admire anybody who could do yes, that. Yes, um, absolutely. It, it, some of it's just getting used to. I, I didn't really like the idea of putting the blue suit on, mm-hmm. um, but now I guess, hey, deal with you know, we're all learning. As as people say, you put your socks on in the morning or a belt or you know, just different types of things that we need to do during the day. That's all. I want to just uh, let's give Larry a chance to breathe. I want to read uh, also, Larry, besides writing many, many songs, Larry also writes poetry. I just want to oh. read one of his poems. Oh. To be silent. To be silent while all the world is noise. To be calm while all the world is in agitation. To be at peace while all the world is at war. To be me while all the world is far from what it was created to be. 
to be a giver while it seems all the world takes, to try when there's nothing left to do, to be hopeful when all seems lost, to be cheerful when all around there is sadness, to be a light while all around there is darkness, to go forward while all the world seems to stand still, to see when all the world is blind, to hear when all the world is deaf, to be when all existence seems to cease. Beautiful. Oh, Larry, that's so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Do you do you publish your poetry? Have you done that? The, Ronnie, <laughs> what's the date on the bottom of that poem? Oh. 1974. Where were you oh, in 1974? 1974. I was after um, my second attempt at medical school. Oh. I, I was in a supportive environment. <laughs> 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 the message in that story, though, and the message in that poem is just just as appropriate in what we're going uh, through right now. It, yeah. it fits more perfectly. So. Uh, yeah. And I, 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 I haven't published. I, I, those poems, uh, many others, has been sitting in a drawer for almost 50 years. I, I, I didn't know what to do. So I gave it to Ronnie a week or so ago, and I really appreciate him sharing them. It's nice. Is beautiful. Oh my goodness, John. Finish your thought, there, buddy. Well, I was going to say that the, the a lot of the things we're talking about, of course, refer and affect the older people more, I guess, and then any age. But I'm I'm also very concerned about the children. Um, yes. Yep. The the socialization aspect, especially the young kids. Um, yes. My daughter teaches third grade and she's doing it from remote, but she also has a son who's in the fourth grade and one who's in the seventh and they're doing it remote. So they got three computers at home going on at the same time. And uh, we see our grandsons every once in a while, they come over, they stay out in the driveway with a mask on and we stand on our porch with the mask on <laughs> and we talk to them and they haven't, that they aren't playing with their friends. Uh, it, it, yeah. They're not going to school. There's not all mm -hmm. that socialization. And those are skills that they're losing. And That's this right. is really the second year. They're going to they're gonna be starting the second year in, yeah. in March or so. Yeah. So that's very concerning as well. We've lost a lot, a, a lot of stuff. And there's going to be a lot of healing mm -hmm. that's going to need to take place after Absolutely. all of this. Absolutely. It's so true, John. Pamela, the suicide rate is going up? Is yes, it's very high. It's very high. I don't have to lay the stats in my head, but yes, there it's, it's going up tremendously. Yes. What, what do you say to somebody, uh, Pamela, if they're kind of, you're getting kind of like the feeling that they're thinking of that? What do you recommend saying? Well, we really, you know, look at that. And the first thing I'm going to have to say is, do you have a plan? You know? And if they don't have a plan, that's no. Plan we, for suicide? Are you saying plan for a, suicide? A plan for suicide. You know, and if it's a plan for suicide, I have to take them to the hospital. Yeah. And you've yeah. done that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How do you in the world do that work? How does Larry do what he does? I don't that amazes me about people what they do. Yeah. Well, you know, Larry, I mean the work you do, I mean, with your, that is such wonderful work. You know, working at Edgewood, oh my goodness. Yep. Yeah. Um, beautiful, beautiful work. Just to be with the people, you know, fulfill those needs the best way you can. That's all you can do. Yeah. Yeah. What do we say to people in our lives? What do you, what do you all think we should be talking about? What are the signs we should be looking at in people's lives? Well, it's interesting with suicide, you, you, ra you rarely ever see a sign. So they'll act like this isn't going to happen. So you never know. You never know um, how they're really thinking. Uh, so you have to be really careful. But I think watching, you know, and just observing and being as, you know, 
um, validating as you can be with somebody, because right now with everything that's happening, you know, the isolation is, is really producing the anxiety, it's producing the loneliness, it's producing the sadness and all of that. Uh, so you really want to, you know, look at every bit of it for them to yeah. help. You're that. right about not seeing it coming because... Uh, it doesn't. I called, I called my brother when I was up in Maine. I was going down to New York and I was going to bring him something. Yeah. And he wanted to make call me and he said, "Are you coming down this weekend?" I said, "No, I'm not coming down this weekend. It's the following weekend." Yep. You want and now and then in retrospect, the reason he called me and asked that because that's the that's the yep. he was he was just planning to that was his plan that yep. was his plan to take his own life. Yep. You know? Yep. Yep. And um, but yep. he didn't want me to he didn't want me to be there for that. You know. No, no, and they, ne and they never do. No, no, they never do. I remember walking in his kitchen and I was seeing this uh, bag of shotgun shells and all of that, you know, just laying there on a, you know, oh. on, a, on a stand there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh. How did you feel when you saw that, Ronnie? It's been a lot of years, but. Um, mm -hmm. that's why I do the show that yeah. um, if you can get somebody one inch closer away from that instead of mm -hmm. one, uh, oh, yeah. farther away you know those things you want to yeah I mean yeah. Uh, I find it um, in, in situations with friends or others who have extreme depression mm -hmm. and what they're going to do next, uh, depending on the relationship, which I think is a, a big part of helping prevent suicide. Yes, is uh, find ways of trying to lighten, you know, the atmosphere. Um, mm -hmm. Help a person kind of put up, get out of themselves. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and I do this with uh, with medical problems too that aren't quite so serious, but use try to use humor. Right. And then I'm always keeping my eyes open for other little things that you can say. And one of them I often think of is a lady went to the doctor and, and uh, um, said, Doc, I have this and I have that. And he says, I don't know. You're, you're having a hard time. Take this medicine. And the lady says, do you think um, you have a, I, I think I can't even tell the joke. <laughs> I'd like a second <laughs> opinion. And he says, you don't look so good either. <laughs> you know? And you're ugly, you know. <laughs> you so, I mean, some of these things are, I, I find with the degree of depression, almost the effect of some humor. Oh, yes. Jolts the person, you know, a little bit. Uh, I know it helps with me. Sometimes uh, even this, who's this man? What's his name? Ronnie? Is that who we're <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, that's that's who he is. <laughs> totally out of the ordinary. I'm looking around, I'm looking around the room. Yeah. <laughs> John, where are we with time? When do we have to get into? The we, have, we have six minutes. Oh dear. When when do you want to? So the, all the rest of it is just pre-recorded, and we don't have to do anything, or what? Oh, we got three. We got three minutes. Uh, about three minutes to go to talk, and then three minutes okay. to go out. You know what I find helps is. Uh, Again, I, I don't want it to take the time away from anyone else, but I find with my brother, what I did is I started a room. He had a, he had a great sense of humor. And uh, my mother, <laughs> on the other hand, had no sense of humor. She, really? She laughed when she thought she should laugh, but she really never got a joke, never saw it coming, wouldn't understand a practical joke. and. <laughs> She would say things like, uh, I remember when we were younger, and she would say, uh, boy, I could, Richie, I could, that's my brother's name, I could really use a really cold glass of water. I'm really thirsty. So my brother, what he does is he goes into the kitchen and he dip, dips the glass in the old dishwater with stuff floating in it. And he gives it back to my mother and hands it to my mother. You know, obviously it's a joke. <laughs> 
She was like horrified. What kind of son have I raised to do this to his mother? And the tears are coming down my face that I just couldn't stand it. You know, oh my God. It was just, uh, so it really helps to kind of like say, well, remind yourself of those moments when they really. That's right. Back. That's right. That's right. That's oh right. My God. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a little bit of a cliche these days, but we really should check, um, John, before these recordings to see, make sure everybody has pants on. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's yeah, right. that should be a, that's, we should make that a rule of the show. We should yeah, they they the caught show. somebody on, on NBC. We're, anybody could be on this show, but you got to have pants. That's right. Wear pants. That's right. How about that? There was a my grandmother when she was well, she was probably my age now, but she was in her seventies. But I was just a, you know like maybe in the first grade. But one of the jokes I used to play on her in the summertime, she'd stay two weeks with us. Uh, she she lived in New Jersey, and they would come up and stay. She would stay two weeks with us during the summer, and um, she liked lemonade. So um, I made her some lemonade and I put some ice cubes in it. And in the bottom I, of the ice cubes, I had a plastic ice cube, which had a, a big fly embedded, <laughs> embedded in it. And the, it was a plastic ice cube, so it would go to the bottom. And so you, as you drank the thing, you were looking into the glass and as you went down, there was that That's plastic a thing with a fly in it. And she went, Oh, and she said, oh, buddy, that was my father. Oh, buddy, look what this kid did to me. <laughs> <laughs> and she spit it out. And I, I just, I was on the floor laughing. But you know, you're right. <laughs> One more thing my brother would do. He goes into the, he goes in the kitchen to the living room and he's peeling a banana. He's walking over to his chair. And, and casually, he peels the banana and he just throws the peel, banana peel on the floor on the rug, you know, and my brother was like horrified. How can I raise a son who would do this? <laughs> Again, no sense of humor. I'm like, tears are coming down my face when he did do this stuff, you know. <laughs> oh, what is, where have I gone wrong as a mother, you know? <laughs> raise a son who would throw a banana peel at our rug. <laughs> oh, we're, we're about that, we're about out of time. And so we it's Thank you, Larry. Up. Thank you. I don't Thank know. you, Larry. Thank you. No. It's so nice. nice to meet you. Yes, Have nice. a wonderful holiday. And yeah. yeah. When when the restrictions lift, come come by and see us at the inn. Yes. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. That would be wonderful. Thank Is you. there anything that that people need? Do you have request lists? Oh or boy, that's a good. Uh, that's a good. Um, I, I, any special treats? Everybody always likes that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, wow, that's good. I'll, I'll think of that, Wendy. I I I, I know <laughs> where you live. Well, I asked um, Meals on Wheels, so I have a couple of um, uh, of people that I'm getting little holiday gifts for, and it's it's fulfilling for me. It's going to be great for them, and and so. Mm -hmm. Wendy, yeah. I, Wendy, I love pistachios if you're in the oh, neighborhood. I oh, uh, well, I wasn't talking about you. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start the screen. Go ahead, Go ahead. <laughs> John. Okay. The girls are getting out of control. Yeah. We, got, got, we got to stop because the girls just go crazy. Going nuts okay. Yeah. Yeah. It. It's all over. <laughs> uh, the ending has Larry's song on it, and oh, it's got some new video, so... Uh, when it finishes, I'll come back and uh, for just a second, okay? So don't let everybody hang up on us. Okay. All okay. right. So if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. If you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. As we travel through this life, there is trouble, there is strife, and someday 
seem dreary and so long But with courage on our side There's no need to run and hide We can lift our wings and learn to fly If you cannot fly If you cannot fly If you cannot fly I will lift you up and tell you that I love you if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. Now today may not seem bright, cause we cannot see the light, and there's thick black darkness all around. We can soar up to the clouds and ignore the angry crowds. We must lift our wings and learn to fly. If you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. If you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. And if fate will be our friend, there'll be peace around the bend. No more tears for us to cry, if you cannot fly. If you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. If you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, if you cannot fly, I will lift you up and tell you that I love you. I will lift you up and tell you that I love you.